on the Edge of Preston Golf Club today for a day with Audemars Piguet and their guests. Uh, play some golf, hopefully give out a few tips uh, and just generally enjoy the day. My relationship with Audemars Piguet started uh, back in 2005 at the uh, Open Championship at St Andrews. That was when I received my first watch and uh, you know it's been going strong since then. I've enjoyed my time with them. I'm not a big jewellery wearer. Uh, but um, you know, a watch is something that I have always worn, and especially Audemars Piguet, very classic look, you know, with the, the face, and just a watch that everybody asks about when they see. Well, welcome to the Audemars Piguet clinic. Um, I, I arranged the weather for you today, the, the wind. Uh, I heard you were all great golfers, so I didn't want to make it too, uh, too easy for you. So I'm going to start off with a pitching wedge. I'm going to hit a few balls just to loosen up. I've hit a few already, but I'm still not quite as loose as I'd like. I start with the wedge because it's one of the shortest irons in the bag and I'm just trying to really get my muscles ready for playing the game of golf. You know, when it gets really windy like this, I like to keep my swing nice and short and compact uh, and really try and take the wrists out of the play as well because uh, as soon as you start hitting it hard and, and getting your wrists involved, the ball obviously shoots up and that's not really what we want today. We want to keep the ball as low as possible with this, uh, I suppose it's a hurricane. Hi right, Lee, here we are at Edgbaston Golf Course, an extremely windy and challenging day. Um, you've been now with the brand six years, so what is your first impression with Audemars? Why did you get into the brand? Uh, well, I thought it was such a prestigious brand, um, you know, oozes class, um, you have to look at the watches themselves. They always try to keep the sort of same shape as well, so there's a continuity there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be honest, the people from Audemars at Piguet have always been fantastic as well. It's a great company to work with. And obviously, if you look at your watch, that's the new model, the Legacy, you're familiar with wearing big watches, um, oversized watches, but clearly you're attracted to the different dimensions, the different dynamics of the product, the sexy materials. Is that something that appeals to you? Yeah, very much so. You know, I've got pretty big arms and, uh, you know, I can get away with a, a big watch. Um, you know, and I've had, you know, sort of a history of buying Audemars Piguet's, the bigger ones, the T3s and the Shaquille O'Neal's and, uh, survivors and things like that and, and that now on to the legacy uh, you know I like the the idea of this one the different metals and uh, the ceramic and then the Kevlar strap and you've got a choice of straps obviously as well so and 2011 in terms of a golfing year for you how would you regard it yeah it's been pretty good I've played quite nicely uh, pretty consistently I haven't uh, won as many tournaments as I've liked I've won two um, but uh, I've had chances to win a few others, and most notably the, the BMW PGA at, uh, at Wentworth, and lost in a playoff there. Um, so it's been a decent year, and I've, I've sort of maintained my world ranking as well. Uh, I started the year obviously first, but I've sort of maintained the points as well. going to make a watch, a Lee Westwood watch. Um, I suppose it, I'd like it to be quite big, you know, like the, the, the big watches, uh, like the Legacy, the Shaquille O'Neal, the T3. Probably uh, a Kevlar strap, something like that, but a mix of uh, titanium, ceramic, that'd be nice. Uh, something that I could play golf in as well, would be great. So Lee, Audemars Piguet, as you know, is a family owned brand, still owned by the ancestors of the founding families. How important is it to you to understand that value that it's retained by the founding families? Yeah, very much so. You know, it shows that you have the, the passion and the tradition of uh, you know whatever business they're in, which is watchmaking in this case. So, uh, you know, it's very important. And of all of the Audemars Piguet watches that you own, that you've seen, you've seen on on collectors' wrists, what would you say is your all-time favourite Audemars Piguet watch? Uh... It's normally the most recent one I've bought. Obviously, that stays on my wrist, but you know, I find myself going. I, I, I switch them all around. You know, and it's such a traditional design. Um, but I have to say, at the moment, it's probably this one, the Legacy. Audemars Piguet, we believe, is the ultimate sports brand. We introduced the Royal Oak 40 years ago, nearly. How do you individually rate Audemars Piguet as the ultimate sports brand in watches? Well, I don't think it's right up there at the top. I think it is at the top. You know, everywhere I go around the world, you know, I'm wearing a watch. You know, people come up to me and say, you know, ask me what's that, and then I have to take it off and <laughs> feel how light it is and, and try it on their wrist. So, uh, you know, it's, I think it's a, a piece that everybody wants.
And finally, regarding the Audemars Piguet stable, the other ambassadors outside the golfers, as you know, we're working with Formula One pilots like Michael Schumacher, the world's greatest footballer, uh, Lionel Messi. We've just signed uh, the world's greatest uh, tennis player, Mr. Djokovic. When you look at that stable of other uh, the premier sports people, how do you feel to be in that company? Oh, it's great to be in that company. You know, they're obviously all world-class athletes and I think that fits right in there with Audemars Piguet being a world-class brand. Mm -hmm.